I'm at the Royal Greenwich Observatory, and this line that you can see here, this is the Greenwich Meridian. Or to put it another way, this is the place where time starts. Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT, is the single time zone across the British Isles, and it's the time zone that all countries deem that they are a certain amount of hours behind or ahead of. Okay, now I'm in Bristol, and I've noticed something odd about this clock. That third hand isn't a second hand, that clock has two minute hands. One of those hands is running on GMT and the other is running on Bristol time. What? Right now it's 2.28 p.m. and it's also 2.28 p.m. in London. But according to this clock, at some point in the past, Bristol was running 10 minutes behind GMT. In fact, until the later part of the 18th century, time in each town was determined by a local sundial. This park is huge. I've lived in London four years, never been to Greenwich, never visited the observatory. Okay, but back to the story. So what that meant was all these towns and cities across the UK were just totally out of sync with each other. For example, Paul Leeds was six minutes behind London and Bristol was 10 minutes behind. In towns to the east of London, like Norwich, sunrise occurred several minutes earlier for them. And this eventually became unsuitable for day-to-day -day activities, obviously. And you'd think it would just be a simple switch, like, okay, everybody was switching to GMT, but no. That's not what happened. It took 40 years for the entire country to switch to Greenwich Mean Time. For 40 years, you just had a bizarre amount of people out of sync with each other, or just being stubborn and refusing to change time zones. Others buying into conspiracy theories about the sun gods and the railways. We'll get into that. Just all around chaos over a simple question, what's the time? People just couldn't give you a correct answer because nobody was in sync with each other. So let's explore that. I mean, it was a total mess, but let me head back to the studio and tell you about the ordeal that it took to get Great Britain on to the exact same time zone, Greenwich Mean Time. A uniform time system for the whole world, a meridian, a prime meridian. Okay, so to understand how we got to this, we have to start our story in the early 19th century. So at this time, we were at the tail end of the Industrial Revolution. In 1827, they saw the first Atlantic crossing on a steamboat. The first public telegraph was sent. And in 1830, the first modern railway carried passengers across the country. And all of the above were a factor in changing people's attitudes towards time and timekeeping. Because up until that point, it was unusual for someone from Taunton to have visited one of the big cities. London was 150 miles away. How would they get there? And with the development of the railroads, it started to be possible for people to travel. And they did, a lot. So after this became widely adopted all across the country, people were traveling to loads of different counties on the trains. That's when all of these local times started to play a factor in really annoying a handful of people. It was clear by the 1840s that for at least three organizations, local time was a grave inconvenience. That was the post office, the railways, and the telegraph companies. And then this guy came along and he had this idea that he took to the post offices. He was like, hey, maybe all the post offices in all the different counties around the country should all just convert to London time. In the hope that then the towns would all change their clocks and then eventually personal clocks and watches would also be changed. But it turns out that the post office doesn't affect individual people as much as Basil Hall thought they would. And in fact, this idea was widely adopted by the railway services. In fact, it was this service, GWR, that decided to standardize their time, or London time, across all of their stations and timetables. And many other railways followed suit over the next few years because it was the best way to stop people missing their trains, trains being delayed and accidents happening on the railroads. So it started to be adopted, and then five years after GWR set this uniform time with London, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway petitioned to the British government to grant uniformity of time across the whole of the UK. But it was unsuccessful. So you had all of these major railway networks, which are booming at the time, the post office and the telegraph companies, all conforming to London time, or GMT, but it hadn't been put into law, which led to so many confusions when trying to pass on messages and share information across the country. A couple of examples being hospitals would use local time to register the births and deaths and courtrooms rule to use local time in their documents. So depending on where they were in the country, this would be confusing when it was being passed on by telegraph because they'd all switch to GMT. And you also just had a lot of towns and cities that were just not having it and continue the debate of what was now called railway time and local time, which brings us back to the clock tower in Bristol. Some places that couldn't make up their minds set two independently set minute hands, one for local time and one for GMT. Oh my God, oh my God. That would have just been so confusing. 
the reason it's frustrating me and stressing me out so much is that we're talking about minutes that the country is out of a line by. It's not that much, but it took all this time. And it's starting to produce so many unnecessary problems for people who are starting to rely on clocks in their daily life. And it also seems like it was really frustrating for this Birmingham scientist. This guy funded the clock tower at the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. And as the town was stalling on conforming to GMT, they were like, uh, do we do this? Do we not do this? He was just like, well, I built this clock tower, so I'm gonna sneak in on a Sunday morning when no one's around and I'm gonna change it to GMT. And he didn't tell anyone about it. And although people noticed it, his plan actually worked. The church then changed its clocks and then privately owned clocks and watches changed to GMT in Birmingham, even though it was still a period where most of the country was still on local time. But by the 1850s, the railways had really started to revolutionize people's social lives and the habits of the country. With crowds swarming to London or even visiting Paris because it took half the time to get there than it did to Liverpool. And throughout all of this, the three big entities were sticking to this new railway time. Astronomers from the Royal Observatory also publicly stated that the Greenwich Mean Time should be widely adopted. And over the next 20 years, towns and cities across the UK followed suit and started to change their clocks. But it still wasn't legally set by Parliament and there were still towns and people that were resistant to change. Blackwoods Magazine carried this article in 1848 titled Greenwich Time, The Time Is Out Of Joint, O Cursed Spirit. And over eight pages, this anonymous writer ripped into the Edinburgh Town Council from seizing the power from God and changing to GMT. And if this article was a YouTube video, well, it would have a mixture of likes and dislikes. And the YouTube comments claimed that local time was not in fact God time, but a time based on fictitious mean sun, chosen because the sun was such a bad timekeeper itself. And in fact, in some months of the year, the new railway time was closer to God's time than before. And then you still had oppositions in the east and the west of the country. And in Bristol, this huge debate was still going on about whether they should change or not, hence the clock having both GMT and Bristol time. And this was mainly because they were a harbour town, which heavily relied on the tide timetable. But the Bristol Times reported in 1852 that no serious inconvenience had arisen in Newport, Swansea, Southampton, or Liverpool. So after that, Bristol therefore made the switch to GMT, and soon after that, Exeter and other towns in the southwest converted to GMT. Okay, we are almost out of this mess, I promise. So 30 years later, it's 1880. Greenwich time is now kept almost throughout England, but it appears that Greenwich time is still not legal time. Like they totally forgot to put it into law. They forgot about that conversation and it was never put into law. So on August the 2nd of 1880, Greenwich mean time was legally adopted throughout the British Isles. They did it. Then the rest of the world slowly followed because GMT is effectively the predecessor to coordinated universal time, which is not adjusted for daylight savings. The UK also has British summertime. We're in that now an hour ahead of GMT. Over the past hundred years, there has been periods of reform and the conversation that's happening most currently about daylight saving times is with the EU who proposed to put an end to daylight savings. But as of March, 2021, the proposal is still waiting for approval. And since that was announced, Brexit has happened in the UK have now left the EU, so it would have to decide for itself if it would also remove daylight savings so that we're not on a separate time zone to Ireland and then a separate time zone to the rest of Europe on the other side. That would also be a very confusing situation. But practices and practicality of removing daylight savings seems far simpler after learning about the hassle that it took to get the UK onto Greenwich Mean Time. Hey guys, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you're still here, I feel like you're pretty invested in this channel to hear what I have to say like when I wrap these things up. Normally I tell you that there's gonna be a new video next week and, and that's gonna continue. That's definitely continuing, but I'm going to start uploading every other Sunday. Um, the reason I'm thinking of doing this and testing it out and trying it is that I find these videos take me a long time to do and I'm always rushing at the last minute just to put the final details to them. Like right now it's the day before upload and I want to jump deeper into topics and just overall make these videos better. And the way that I can do that is by dedicating more time to them. So instead of uploading every Sunday, I'm gonna be uploading every other Sunday. But I just wanted to keep you guys updated, let you know for the people that are here every week, I appreciate the support and the love so much. And yeah, we've got some 
great videos coming up, some deep videos, some serious videos that require a lot of attention. Yeah, so that's kind of all I really wanted to say. But if you are new around here, thank you for watching. Welcome to the channel. My name is Andy. I make word explainers on this channel every other Sunday. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. Like the video, it, it helps. It really helps. We're trying to get this channel to 10K subscribers. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. And um, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Thank you.